Bye, Mr. Reeves. See you Monday. All right, Jackie. Ready? You'll love it. I know you will. Come on. Hold tight. Too. No, actually, Mr. Scarn's here because I asked him to come. I want him to join the class. No, no, impossible. There is no room in my class for anyone so lacking in discretion as to call himself after our Bolshevik Prime Minister, our ex-Prime Minister, I'm happy to say. It's only a nickname he's picked up because he looks so serious. Mm. Appropriate only because they are both D-I-M-W-H-I-T-S. There's no H in dimwits. <clears throat> Mr. Scullin, push off to the vestibule. He's not slow, Miss Miles, truly. He's just been quiet since his mum and dad went in the fire. He doesn't say much, that's all. But if he could come here with all the others, he might perk up. No, no, definitely not. Besides being simple, the child is penniless. His grandfather was on sustenance. He spends all that on inebriating beverages. Who'd pay for the lessons? Bert's told me he'll give up the grog if it'll help bring Mr. Scullin round. <laughs> and it was in his cups when he said that, no doubt. But, Miss Miles, if you could only... No, no, no more arguments. I have more important things on my mind. Have you read this week's recorder? No. There's a story in it about Ginger Meggs. The cartoon? And now they're going to make it into a radio programme. And they're looking for a boy to play Ginger. Mr. Scullin! <gasps> Cosmo Peterson. Oh, he's such a deal. He has talent. The sort of talent that separates an artist from an artiste. I have been 27 years in this business, and I can spot it, I can sniff it out. Who do you think discovered that I had it? Who? Nobody. But I knew. I spotted it. And I took my talent, and I left this godforsaken hole. Oh, yes, but I'm going to do it again with Cosmo. When Benny Baxter hears him sing, he will take us both to stardom. Who's Benny Baxter? To think that he's actually coming to Mona Lou. Oh. Mona Lou? Where's Mona Lou? How should I know? But if it's on the list, you go there. I don't want to go there. Benny, Benny, I know it's tough. I know it's hard. 
But you chose this wonderful, crazy profession we're both in. It's your life. And sometimes, unfortunately, you've just got to take the rough with the smooth. Why? Because if you don't, you're fired. Some days I hate this business. That's my boy. Get out there, Benny. Find our star. In Moonaloo. I'm sure that Mr. Baxter would take the recording of your performance back to Sydney with the highest recommendation. <laughs> now, I know you're all looking forward to my little soiree where you can be individually presented to Mr. Baxter. It's so refreshing to meet somebody else in the business. <laughs> I have worked in Sydney, Claire. Oh. Well, not exactly in Sydney, but near Sydney. Really, Miss Mars? Where? Do you know that first at all? Is that music too loud for you? What? Oh, oh, I'll have the girl stop it immediately. No, 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 I will. Excuse me. I suppose so. Well, could you stop playing? And talk to me? What did you think of Cosmo? I can't really say too much at this stage. It may prejudice the decision of the network. That bad, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm laughing for. I've really got to come up with the goods on this trip. I've sort of staked my job on it. How come? Well, you know my show, Benny Baxter's Bunkhouse. I'm sorry, but I haven't listened for a long time. You and half of Australia. Well, that's my problem. I promised if I could come up with a hit family serial in the show, we'd be able to grab a lot more listeners. And they said if I came up with a winner, I could stay on air. If not, another statistic in the growing unemployment figures. So Ginger Megs has got to be good. Oh, he's got to be a corker. Listen, Mr. Baxter, I think I can help you. I've got the perfect kid to play Ginger Megs. He's even got red hair. Oh, that's a good start on the wireless. This is him, Mr. Scullin. Doesn't look like the Mr. Scullin, I know. It's a nickname. Do you think you could tell the wireless people about him? Have we got a record of his books? Oh, no. We could never afford to get one done. Well, look, I'm not leaving until tomorrow morning. I could leave the machine overnight, and if someone was to get in and use it, well... Nothing could be done about it, I suppose. Oh, thank you. What are you doing later on tonight? Breaking and entering. So my two pairs beats your full house. That means you now owe me 1,200,432 quid. I'll take it out of your next week's lunch money. <laughs> Jackie, my darling. I was just helping Mr. S with his sums. Would you like a little drop? Made it myself. No, thanks, Bert. I just want to borrow Mr. Scullin for a bit. What for? There's a bloke here from the wireless in Sydney. He wants to hear Mr. Scullin's voice and make him a star. A star? That's a better story than two pairs beating a full house. 
Jeez, Jack, you're a killer. I'm not kidding, Bert. It's Benny Baxter. The Benny Baxter. Oh, never heard of him. Look, you said you wanted me to help the kid come out of himself. Will you give me a chance? You want it, don't you, Mr. Scullin? I suppose. Good. Come on, then. Give my regards to Broadway. Right, here we go. Just say your name. Look, it's easy. You just say your name, tell them why you want to be on the wireless, and then sing the song I taught you. My name is Paul Carmichael, but people call me Mr. Scullin. I would like to play Ginger Meggs because I reckon I'm a lot like him, except I could easy lick Tiger Kelly and Coogan. My music teacher, Miss Jackie Summers, has written this song about Ginge, and I'd like to sing it for you now. wasn't too difficult, was it? Now it's your turn. Am I interrupting anything? Hello there, young fella. You must be the famous Mr. Scullin. I've always admired your policies. <laughs> ah, I see you learned how to work the contraption. I'll see this gets to my executive producer, Miss Marjorie Milson, special delivery. Oh, but that is... The... Excuse me, sir. My granddad always listens to you on the wireless. <laughs> well, that's terrific. Uh, why don't you run along now to your granddad, eh? You little bloke? Yeah, he's Bonza. But I think I should You don't have you... to. I was glad to help. The truth is, I think you're a real pip to worry whether or not I lose my job. Oh, it isn't that. It's the record. Don't mention it. I won't break the budget. Why don't you play something for me now? But... Please? All right. What do you want me to play? Anything. Gee, you're beautiful. I don't know that one. No, I mean you. I, uh, I never expected to meet anyone so gorgeous out here in the bush. I mean, uh, where did you get that hat? I know that one. Where did 
Did you get that hat? Tell me, pretty maid, why isn't it becoming and such a lovely shade? I've got to tell you that you're a pippin green, and if I'm not too familiar by that, I simply mean in your green hat, you're beautiful, the best dressed girl in town. In your green hat, you're wonderful, <laughs> from your shingle top all the way down. You're like a fashion show from head to toe. What a figure, what a face, and what a chapeau. Which all means that you're simply marvelous in your green hat. There's not a mannequin on Fifth Avenue Who could wear a hat so smartly as that one looks on you You'd be a panic in Newport or Palm Beach I just heard a blind man whisper Why oh, isn't she a peach? In your green hat, you're beautiful The best dressed girl in town In your green hat, you're wonderful From your shingle top all the way down you're like a fashion show from head to toe. What a figure, what a face, and what a chapeau. Which all means that you're simply marvelous in your green hat. You're not just saying that. Of course not. I've traveled. Golly. when you were a kid in Moonaloo that you'd ever be on the wireless. Whoa, whoa. Is your hair naturally red? Anything to say to our Sydney readers. Or a nook that your glory opens to. I love every winding bay, they delight me every way, but most of all I love just you. Sea of Asia blue 
And wherever I may look, there's a cranny or a nook that your glory opens to. I love every winding bay, they delight me every way. But most of all I love, most of all I love, most of all I love. Just you! And this is little Fiona McAllister, who'll play your girlfriend, Minnie. Please, I'm sure. Well, Mr. Scullin, now we're all one big happy family. Would you like to have a go at the first scene? It's the one in the kitchen. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the radio adventures of Australia's favourite youngster, Ginger Megs. But first, let's have a word from our sponsor. Sydney flour is our flour, we use it every day. For scones and cakes that mother bakes, you'll find that it's okay. And after you have tried it, you'll join with us and say, you'll say, Sydney flour is our flour, we use it every day. Mum says it's the best. Sydney, Sydney flour. And now, let's listen into the Meg's household at tea time. Mm, just a little ginger-headed fellow. If you've finished your tripe, you can go and tidy up your room. Oh, 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 oh. Ginger, did you leave your billy cart on the path? That billy cart of yours, you're always leaving it around. Cut. <laughs> Ginger, did you leave your billy cart on the path? Cut. Ginger, did you leave your billy cart out on the path? Uh, 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 cut. Ginger, did you leave your billy cart on the path? Yes, Ma. Pa's always so blinking tired when he gets home from the dogs. I reckon he might be grateful for the lift. You could have killed me, boy. Crikey, Dad. I'm sorry. I'll pay for the window out of me pocket money. The, the, the way I figure it, the Harbour Bridge will be paid for before you'll be able to come up with the cash. That's the voice on the record. Her voice. I didn't know anything about it much, I promise. It's your responsibility. Well, what can I say? Try goodbye. Oh. <coughs> Mind if I join you? Mr. Wally, were you aware that your grandson had been misrepresented to us? Eh? Well, you must have known that wasn't Mr. Scullin on the record. Uh, well, yes and no. Yes, I knew it was Jackie made that record. And no? No worries. No worries? We're ruined. Think of the publicity. Now, tell me this. You chose Jackie's voice because you thought it was the best for Ginger Meggs, right? Right. And Jackie's in there acting his socks off as Ginger Meggs, right? Right. Right. Wrong. The public would never buy it. You expect the public to buy Sydney Flower, don't you? Look, anyone who reads Ginger Meggs knows that Mrs. Meggs is fat, right? Well, that old, that old chook in there's as skinny as a rake, and who's the wiser? He's right, much. But a woman is the all-Australian boy. There's something unhealthy about it. We've already got our image in Mr. Scullin. He can do all the publicity and Jackie can do the voice. Told you. No worries. So, Min, it looks like until I paid for that winter, there's buckleys of us going to the pictures, said Diavo. My dad was right, Ginge. You're a real no-hoper. Hang on, Min. Yikes. I just had an idea. 
What sort of a scheme is our ginge hatching now? If you want to find out, tune in tomorrow to Benny's Bunkhouse for the next exciting episode in the radio adventures of Ginger Megs, brought to you by Sydney Flower. Sydney, Sydney Flower. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, Funny cove. You think so? Who ever heard of champagne on a picnic? <laughs> well, from now on, you can have champagne on horseback if you like. You're a star. <laughs> Don't be silly. Well, you and Mr. Scullin, half a star. Here's to half a star and to Ginger Meigs, the toast of the country. You know you saved my bacon. Did I say thank you? No. Thank you. The last six months don't seem so awful now. Were they really that bad? I'm so glad it's all over. And what are you going to do now? I don't know. Go back to the post office, I suppose, if they'll have me. Well, I've got a few plans. Oh? Do they include me? You bet. Oh, Benny, that's wonderful. You'll love Moona Lou. Moona Lou? Where breezes croon a loo A lazy tune a loo From dawn till noon a loo And like a starry night Two eyes are shining bright Dear eyes of lovely Up to the station shack at Moonaloo. No. But he has to go. No, he doesn't. It's in his honour. What's the matter with kids today? Yeah, you can't trust them. Last night he tried to bluff me with a busted strap. I did bluff you. Only because I was sick. Look, kid. You've been nominated Australian Radio Personality of the Year. Well, you've got to go. Well, the sponsor wants to show his appreciation. Be the biggest party of the year. I'll be in that. You can't go. You're sick. I just got better. What do you think? Do you fancy a party? I reckon I've got a better idea. She's got a better idea. Come on, Jack. Out with it. Take me on to Luna Park Just for fun Where the lights shine after dark Take me on The crystal maze I idolize The scenic's got me Hypnotized, so take me 
having the time of his life. Yeah. Hey, we'd better shoot through. They're expecting us at the reception. Oh, no, Benny. They haven't been on the dipper yet. Hey! Who's carrying on the big dipper? Hey, look, I've got a surprise for you. Marge has organised for you to meet the Prime Minister tonight. Oh, no. Crikey. Come on, Benny. Let's give it a miss. Mr. Scullin meets Mr. Lyons. Oh, 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 that's a dog fight I wouldn't want to miss. <laughs> anyway, it's a real honour. Bert's right. Mr. S is a celebrity now. He's got responsibilities. Besides, think of the publicity. But we don't need the publicity anymore. The show's over. We've got our plans to think about now. That's what I am thinking about. If you and Mr. S win that award on Friday, I reckon you're a cinch for a new cereal. And a lot more money. A new cereal? Is that all you've got planned for me? What about us? Ginger Mix put Benny Baxter back on the map. All I've got to do is keep on playing my cards right. And I'm the ace. Right. I couldn't have done it without you, Jackie. I think you're forgetting. I started this and I could stop it if I wanted to. Yeah. By telling everybody that Australia's favourite kid's a fraud? Charming. You wouldn't do that, Jack. Oh, go on. Go to your precious reception and meet the Prime Minister. I hope you fall flat on your faces. Now, what's the matter with her? Come on. Let's go.
but those great feet of the bridge I've never seen so many bottles in the one place at the one time. I like to do the park best. It sure leaves the boodaloo show for them. I expect it does. <laughs> Are you sure this is quicker? Naturally. It's a bit scary. Well, the car's just across the park. Nothing to be afraid of. Spare us a tray, mate. Right, if I could see ya. Come on, mate. Give us a diner. Yeah, come on. Zach won't hurt you. Just enough for a cuppa. Glad to see you brought your mates. <laughs> Go away. Go home. Oh, have a heart, lady. We're all on Sasso here. Been on Sasso myself. Oh, come on, don't give us that. You're a bloody toff. Excuse me. It's true. We didn't have two bob tribe together till this year. What happened? Find your fairy godmother. <laughs> That's about right. Found a beauty right at Moonaloo, eh, Mr. Scullin? Mr. Scullin? I've got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you don't need no fairy godmother. Just a bit of luck, some imagination, and a whole lot of good old-fashioned mouse. <laughs> Here's a toast, cheery toast. Drink in the pubs to fight old man depression. We want more, rich or poor, to join in the fun and make a real impression. Come along, boys, and chase away depression. Come along, boys, we've got no time to lose. Put on a smile and join the new procession. Singing a bright song instead of the blues. Pull up your socks and put your best foot forward. Tell the whole world that we can carry on. Just live and laugh today. The child hit it, hooray! And Mr. Depression will soon be dead and gone. There's a tax on bags, a tax on bags, a tax on women's clothes. A tax on all the little things that only a married man knows. A tax on whiskey, a tax on beer, but by the heavens above. What will all the taxis do if they put a tax on love? Vanish the budget blues, spread the happy news. God times are coming, keep on harming. Whether you win or lose, put on your running shoes. Give it a smile, get over the style and banish the budget blues. Banish the budget blues, spread the happy news. Good times are coming, keep on harming. Whether you win or lose, put on your running shoes. Give it a smile, get over the style and banish the budget blues. Reception. What a little jet, weren't you, boy? I was scared, but. No, you weren't. You were a true little pro. <laughs> I couldn't say a word. It didn't matter, no one noticed. As long as you can manage a speech next Friday night if you win that award. There isn't going to be a Friday night. We're going back to Moonaloo. You're not still going on about that, love? It's all gone too far. 
I thought you had Mr. Scullin's best interests at heart. I do. Well, then why do you want him to go on being a little stooge, living a great big lie? The lad's enjoying it. It's sort of fun. There you are, love. Well, I don't care. I think we should pack it in. Jack, this is old bird talking. Remember back a few months? I was pretty much a no-hoper. I still am. But tonight I met the Prime Minister. And Mr Scullin was a lonely, miserable little blighter. Now he's top of the world. So, uh, can't be all bad, eh? Yeah. And two pairs beats a full house. Good on you, Jack. Okay, now. How are we going to get Mr. Scullin through Friday night? Making a speech in front of all those people and talking into a microphone. I have an idea, and a brilliant one if I may say so. Jackie, we'll set you up in the wings with a live mic, and Mr. S can mouth the words. Sounds complicated. That'll be a snack, eh, Mr. Scullin? And now, before our next award, would you welcome the cast of that ever-popular serial, Dad and Dave! Everybody round the place will dance to it. It's gonna set the pace so friends to it. It's a snifter, party lifter. It's the snake gully swagger. Every tramp along the road will sway to it. And farmers help to load their dray to it. Even abos and their tabos. The snake gully swagger. All the pigs in the pen, the rooster and the hen are doing it now. The ducks and the drakes are doing shimmy shakes. Even Sally, our champion cow, grab your partner around the waist and go to it. With every step you take, you'll glow to it. It's a slide dance, dinky die dance. It's a snake gully swagger. <laughs> Ducks and the drakes are doing shimmy shakes. Even Sally, our champion cow, grab your partner around the waist and go to it. With every step you take, you'll glow to it. It's a slide dance, dinky dye dance. It's a snake gully swagger. <laughs> I'm sure the cast of Dad and Dave are warmed by your lavish response. And now, one of Australian radio's most popular young stars. And a beautiful song he has for us, too. 
Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome Mr. Benny Baxter. Just because I'm lonely, it doesn't mean I'm blue. Just because I miss somebody, don't think I miss you. You're out of my mind, I never mention your name. You're out of my mind, you've gone the way that you came. Your magic spell is broken at last. I've left you behind with other memories of the past. But once in a while, I feel a touch of regret. And once in a while, my heart forgets to forget. Who do I think I'm fooling? I've loved you from the start. You're out of my mind, but you're still in my heart. in a while I feel a touch of regret and once in a while my heart forgets to forget who do I think I'm fooling I've loved you from the start you're out of my mind but you're still in my heart. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And now it gives me great pleasure to present the award for Australia's Radio Personality of the Year. And the nominations are Robert Marshall for Dad and Dave, Peter Wilkinson for Dr. Luke, Maura Phillips for Wednesday's Child, and Paul, Mr. Skull and Carmichael for Ginger Megs. The envelope, please. And the winner is Paul, Mr. Skull and Carmichael for Ginger Megs. <laughs> my granddad's truck to get it home. I'll bet you have a few things you'd like to say. Well, I reckon I ought to thank a few people who made this award possible. First, there is the whole cast of Ginger Megs for helping me with my lines. And then there's Miss Milson, the executive producer and everyone at the station who made the whole thing fun for me. And then there's Miss Miles. And uh, who's Miss Miles? Uh, 
And most of all, I want to thank my best friend, Jackie Summers, who really is the one with all the talent. She deserves this award much more than me. She got herself involved in all this just to help me, and to help you, Betty, and I love her for it, and I reckon you do too. I sure know she's sweet on you, aren't you, Jack? So ladies and gentlemen, spare some of your clapping for my mate, Jack. Come on, Jackie. <laughs> Ginger Man Somehow you do the things we all did 